So what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with the great brother Kevin Samuels. Now he's definitely also on YouTube as well. As you see, the brother's dressed very sharp, and he wants to talk to a lot of you brothers about stepping your game up. On, on, on this dressing because we, we have a lot of brothers walking around here looking kind of dusty. So, so Kevin wanted to get your game up. So Kevin, thank you for joining us on the show today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Long time coming. Yes, sir. So Kevin, tell people kind of like what you do. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Kevin Samuels. I'm a personal and corporate image consultant and an image consultant basically means I package people. I help you look good, smell great, become the be your best version of yourself each and every day so you can increase your opportunities and outcome. Basically, I make sure that you look good so you can get some doors open for you, whether in your personal life or your professional life. All right. So that particular uh, service that you offer, mm -hmm. is it something that's extremely popular with African-Americans? Um, you know, it's normally what I do is honestly feel what I do is usually in the next level. You don't, everything, we're in media. So we know that a politician doesn't get out to that mic without being scripted. Every time you see somebody before a camera that has a uh, profile, that has been scripted down to the color, the tie they wear, their shoe, whatever. Uh, I actually came down to the middle market specifically to work with men, black men in particular, because our image has been tarnished so much. And I am trying to make it something that brothers really kind of understand how important our individual image is so we can use that to fight back uh, against all these kind of negative stereotypes. We already have natural style. I mean, people copy us, but I'm trying to get, you know, we come from a different school to where, you know, we used to get dressed up to go to church, go out to dinner, those kind of things. We used to be sharp. Now I want men to actually take that back and put on their, what I call their black armor and get back, get out into that world and fight that battle. So you mentioned the image of black men. Who mm -hmm. contributed to the image of black men going down? Well, uh, the, the, the dominant society, white people. I mean, look, you can look back to, even from a historical perspective, go back to 1915, D.W. Griffith, Birth of a Nation. You know, back in a time where we were 50 years out of slavery, uh, we had towns and stuff around uh, the United States, Rosewood. I'm here in Oklahoma, so we had Black Wall Street. We were doing just fine on our own. And then you see this movie heralding the Klan coming in and cleaning up this black scourge. You saw black men in the halls of Congress eating chicken and watermelon with the feet all up. And, and it was that was the beginning of the major media assault, the propaganda assault on the black male image. And it has continued <clears throat> on since then. Uh, look, think back into the 80s when you had shows like Cops, uh, America's Most Wanted. You want to, you, the, the face of crime, the boogeyman in the United States is the black male image. So we, I don't expect the dominant society to actually backtrack even if the people today say they didn't have anything to do with it it's up for us individually to take control of our own image and actually put it in the face and say no 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 that's not who we are this is who i am and i demand your respect so uh i could go on about that but yeah we know who started but it's for us on an individual level and collectively to understand that and do something about it so what steps can you know we take to change the narrative on that image you know um, I have, that's a multi-layer question, but the simplest stuff is take individual accountability. Um, I sent you an article, uh, about a young brother who actually did his own experiment. He worked for Buzzfeed. He's a reporter for Buzzfeed. And what he did is he actually did his own own personal experiment where he went one week and then the second week where he just dressed differently. He wasn't dressed in a suit. He just went from being dressed you know, streetwear style to being dressed like smart, casual, business casual. Did the same things at the same time and he tracked his experience. And it was night and day. He was even surprised at how well and how different people treated him just because he had on a pair of pants, some hard, you know, some church shoes and a button up shirt. Um, so one of the things we have to understand is how important it is. And then we got to do something about it. Uh, one of the things that I actually do on my channel is something called Soup Saturdays, to where I, my thing is I want 
men to actually put on a suit on a Saturday. Now, you don't always have to necessarily wear a tie or something like that, but a full suit. You can even have a suit, white T-shirt on and some, and some all leather sneakers. But the difference in how people treat you and, and how they look at you is night and day. The reality is this, Phil. You go out to the mall this weekend and you look around and you see the average 40-year-old man and a fifth grader. They're both wearing jeans, some sort of graphic T-shirt, a ball cap, tennis shoes. That's not the way it's supposed to be. There's not a lick of difference between the way they're dressed. We have to make it to where men understand that, yeah, it's cool to dress comfortable. That's where we really got hit, dressing comfortable, dressing down to where we look so youthful, streetwear, hip hop, all that kind of stuff. And then when we go out and people just naturally don't necessarily take you as seriously. Now, let me say something about this. The human brain works on archetypes. We just do. We associate, you know, uniforms with different things. It's hardwired into us. I'm not trying to say that putting on a suit is going to all of a sudden make your life easy. I'm not saying if you actually just, you know, change the way you uh, dress that all of a sudden all our problems are going to disappear. But what I am saying is it challenges the stereotype. It challenges the way the world looks at you. And more importantly, the way you look at yourself. I have yet to see a man who actually, when he's looking good, smelling good, who doesn't hold his chin up, chest out, walking straight, feel like the man. Just doesn't happen. Yeah. And then you talk about the psychological aspect of it, that anytime a man wears a suit, most people will assume that he is successful. That's it. And you can be broke as a joke. That's it. And see, this is for, this is for us to do because we know how, we know how folks look at us and see, the thing is, I want the world to look at us a certain way. I want our women to look at us a certain way. I want our children to look at us a certain way. I want our little boys, because I didn't grow up with my father, but I did get a chance to see my grandfather who was a man's man, and my grandfather was sharp. You know, he always looked nice. He, was, he had a fourth grade education, drove trucks, and was a mechanic. But he set a standard for our family right here in little Oklahoma. I learned most of the things I know about men's style here but you but wherever i went i was they said that's that samuels boy i didn't i wasn't just representing myself i was representing my family and that's something else we got to get back to we've been preached this individualism stuff so much that that's cool but we are also representing your family your people and black men so honestly i when i walk around and when i work with guys and i walk around here i I see the way young brothers look at me in the mall, even though they may not necessarily know how to give a compliment, but young brothers, 13, 14, that's what's up. Oh, you, that's smooth, man. I like that. And then, but what I notice in them is whatever they're doing in the mall, around their friends, running over to Chick-fil-A or whatever, when they see me, they're like, oh, okay, that's, what, that's where I'm going to be. That does something for their young brother. Yes, sir. And, and you know, I said, I grew up like that. You know, you always had to dress up to go to church or dress up to go to certain events. You know, you was always told, at least I was growing up, you always had to have a black suit that way you have something for a wedding or a funeral, mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if anything. Right. And, yes, sir. you know, I'm pretty sure you've done videos, not in your suits versus maybe in your suits. Mm -hmm. So could you tell the difference in the reaction of the audience, you know, with the suit versus without, you know, yeah, I can. When and I knew this when I first came to YouTube, uh, because my business is in the quote unquote real world. But I knew when I came to YouTube, there were no black men in the men's fashion side. There were none. There were dozens of white guys, uh, Hispanic guys, some Asian guys. So I knew when I got on camera, I was going to not necessarily be relatable to maybe a younger demographic. But what the goal was, was actually to actually gain their respect, to gain their respect and actually you start at the top. So I, here's the thing. When I back off of wearing a suit, let's say I just have a button up on even or have a black sweater on or a black shirt or some jeans or whatever. Even when you dress down, people still feel like you dressed up because everything that I wear is fits and is quality. I really don't care about the brand. I care about the fit more important than the fashion and the quality more important than the quantity. 
So you don't have to break your bank to look good because that's that's one of the things we associate a lot with, you know, image and uh, with style. We think it's going to cost a ton of money and it really doesn't. You just have to know which one of the they're like, you just have to know some key information. One, you need to know what your style personality is. There are nine of them. And that's kind of like your language. And then there are certain uh, manufacturers, designers that may fit better into that style. You need to know your measurements. Go to Men's Warehouse, Joseph A. Bank, somewhere like that, the rinse tuxedo. Let them measure your neck, your arm length, your chest, your waist, your inseam. Those are your basic measurements. It's not small, medium, large, extra large. And then when you know your measurements, you can actually get something to actually work for your body right now and in the future. Right. So what do most, when you say the nine styles that, that men have, mm -hmm. when it comes to a lot of African-American men, which one do they lean on the most? Most, most black men lean more towards what I call, it's like an Americana style. Uh, black men in, have always been leaning more uh, socially conservative. Uh, and, you know, we, you know, we have that Christian upbringing, the church, such and so forth. So if you look back, like in the 50s and the 60s, think about Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you know, go back to where you would see brothers on a, a campus of HBCUs in the 60s. That's always been much more of our style. It's simple. It's clean. It's neat. Black, white, gray, blue, brown. Uh, we can wear uh, we can wear greens, uh, some yellows solid colors, um, not overly flashy. Um, so, you know, things kind of like um, so a maker that comes to mind, something is like uh, Ralph Lauren. These new, you know, it's funny that when Ralph Lauren came along with polo, I saw a lot of guys in high school gravitate towards that mm -hmm. uh, because it's an all, it's an Americana kind of style personality. Um, I hate to use the show, but if you think back the show Mad Men, it was set in that, that 60s time frame. But if you that's that's kind of more what we lean towards um, as a cross section. Now, if there was a second one, uh, we tend to lean more towards. Uh, there's also a, a, a component that's about like hip hop street. Uh, but that's usually for guys that, that, that lean that way, either are in the industry entertainment or they're younger than they're 25 and under. Right. And it's interesting that you mentioned, um, Ralph Lauren mm -hmm. is, is because, um, you know, I, I had bought a, actually a couple of jackets from them mm -hmm. actually, um, uh, which this one is that right now, you know, mm -hmm. I got a good deal on that. You know, now some people get their suits tailored. I'm not at that point yet where, you know, I want to be getting tailored suits as very fitted. I mean, it seems like yours look tailored, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I'm not at that point yet. <laughs> Tailored suits actually are less expensive over the lifetime. Um, tailored custom. I, I think when you say tailored, you mean like getting especially made for yourself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Custom, custom made to measure. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's, um, I find it less expensive because the, you can have a suit and it lasts you 20 years. This suit I'm wearing right now, I've had for over a decade. So a, a big part of what I do on my channel too is I'll make the quick five to seven minute videos, but I do a lot of educating in the, in, in the, uh, when I do live streams. So I take the mystery out of it. So when, when men are ready to kind of level up at their, at their, cause everybody is ready at a different pace. Mm -hmm. I take the mystery out of it. I would rather, you know, what's going on instead of you having to go out to the world and just listen to what, you know, a salesperson is telling you, they may be well-meaning, but at the end of the day, what you wear, uh, what you wear is your appearance and is how people are going to treat you. It's too important to leave to a stranger. Right. So let's dig into to your psychology a little bit. So you're wearing the black tie, which means more sophistication. Why you choose mm -hmm. sophistication? Right. Um, wearing all black. I, when I dress, I, I tend to dress in monochrome. I wear a lot of black and white, black, white, gray because I know what looks good on my body. Mm -hmm. I know what looks good in photos. And because we have a more public persona being here on YouTube, 
I also have to communicate status, consistency, you know, uh, and it all stems from one thing, personal brand. Mm -hmm. You know, personal brand is the one word, it's an adjective that kind of uh, associates with you. And it's not what it's not what you think. It's actually what people say about you when you leave a room. Right. You used to call that a reputation, mm -hmm. but it's a personal brand. So my personal brand is stylish. But how does stylish dress? How does stylish walk? How does stylish talk? What does stylish eat? What does stylish uh, wear? Uh, who does stylish hang around with? What does stylish drive? You know, all those kind of things. Um, now, all these concepts are for people who, if they want to get that deep into it, I can get really granular. But what I try to do is I try to make a very something very complex, very simple, because I know most guys didn't have a daddy growing up and already live in your life. I don't want to make it a college level course. I want it to be simple bite-sized information to where guys can take what they need quickly and get out of the door and have it impact their real life and change their outcomes. Right, and, and also talking about tie colors, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and I wear certain tie colors for certain reasons. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I've studied the psychology of that as well. So, you know, and maybe the audience don't understand certain, you know, tie colors and, and what some of that mean because at certain times in certain messages, I will wear the red tie and yeah, uh, black, black and white for a whole mm -hmm. lot of reasons. But um, so, can you explain more about that? So let's take President Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. When he announced that he we had, we had uh, killed Osama bin Laden, he did that Barack Obama walk and he was wearing his red tie. And the red tie communicates power. We associate red in our, in our subconscious with with you know, uh, some sectors it's sexy, but it's power. So when we're trying to communicate a message of strength, seriousness, resolve, masculinity, red. So but let's say uh, post 9-11, when, when you're, you're trying to be empathetic, you're trying to be the, the consoler. So if, let's say you have a, uh, some sensitive information that you want to present to the, to the channel, to the public, uh, and you may wear blue, because it, it's a it's a more muted color. It's more sympathetic. It's more empathetic. It doesn't. It's not just out there in your face. And it's that psychology behind image that actually people know that it's out there, but uh, don't understand how deep it goes. So yeah, I've noticed that when I've noticed that on some of your videos when you're wearing this or wearing that, I'm like, and it, it translates with the message very well, and that's good. Yeah, just like, you know, some people don't understand that wearing pink is solidarity with women. So certain yes. messages you want to get to the women, you may throw mm -hmm. something pink on, whether it's a shirt or whether it's a tie. So it is, it's, ladies and gentlemen, it's levels to this. You know, it's not just throwing on clothes. And and um, I didn't always know that. And, and mm -hmm. I'm always wanting to do some research and, and looking into different things. Um, but you may, let's say you have a guy that's, you know, dressed up and he's wearing his clothes very well. Mm -hmm. But how important is actual grooming? Oh, geez. Well, grooming, see, grooming is the next part. The, it's in the first seven seconds that your appearance actually resonates with somebody. Uh, they'll, that'll put you into the category whether they like you or don't like you or leaning towards dealing with you or not. But the grooming piece of it is where uh, you, cement, you cement that thing in place. So it's, and it's particularly with men. If you're going to wear a beard, you know, keep it take care of it, whether it's, you know, a five o'clock shadow or whether it's, you know, a longer beard, keep it lined up, edged up, beard care, beard oil. You want to make sure it's clean, washed, maybe have a beard, maybe have a scented beard oil. Uh, you know, brothers, we always want to keep that line, you know, short haircuts. So keep that line done. One of the most important grooming tips all men need to do is shine your shoes, shine your, clean your shoes, then shine your shoes. Um, you don't even you can take your shoes in your closet right now and make them look almost brand new by cleaning them off, putting a nice shine on them. The shoes that you have laces that have laces in them, change your laces. You know, if you got brown laces, put some new brown laces in there. You got some sneakers and they have white laces in there, throw some throw some uh, some green laces in there. Just change up little things like that. Keep your fingernails clean. You know, it's particularly when you're dealing with women, you don't want to 
have long, dirty, that's just, they don't want you, those nasty hands anywhere near them. Grooming is, especially in this time of year, we're in the summertime, grooming is really important. Uh, feet, your hands, your face, your breath, uh, the deodorant, you know, and, and I am big on having guys wear fragrance. But before you put on a cologne, you need to make sure you clean. That's right. And also when it come to colognes, like, like for me, for instance, heavier scents work for me, mm -hmm. but lighter scents, it, it, 30 minutes, you won't smell it no more. So and every, you know, everyone's pH is different. Yeah. Everybody's. And that's one of the, especially for black men. Um, I am, I have a huge fragrance collection, but see black men, we have more melanin in our skin. So we, we need things that, uh, have more, um, earthy notes like, patchouli, incense. Uh, that's why, you know, things like in the 90s, that was all the fresh, clean, bright stuff. It, you'd spray it on and it'd be gone in two hours. But then you wear something like uh, this one. This is L'Aqua de Gio, uh Perfumo. Mm. I think it's the best designer fragrance on the planet, period. And it works exceptionally well. This is the one fragrance I think every guy should own. And this works exceptionally well on darker skin because it has that patchouli and that incense in it, but it can still be worn in an office environment. You can wear it at a picnic. You can wear it at a, at the yeah. governor's ball, if that's something you go to. Um, the, also the thing about fragrance is it either helps you elevate your mood or it helps you set a mood. So it is very important. And the fragrance you actually pick, depending on what you're trying to uh, accomplish. Because at the end of the day, Phil, you said you were gonna, you were kind of interested in learning more about it. It's, image is a language. You speaking to people without talking to them. Because let's say, Phil, you out representing, you know, your, your company, your brand. You're engaged with this one person over here. But people in the room are, are, can see you. They're making assessments about you based upon how they view you. You're communicating to them before you even get there. That's one of the things that I try to get men to really understand so we don't t so that we don't just blow it off and say, oh, it's just clothes. You know, it ain't that big a deal. I tell guys the main and this is the main thing I tell guys. Opportunity happens in between where you're going, between when you leave your house and your destination is where most of your was where chance comes into place. Chance encounters. You may be at your local, you know, go grab a Starbucks or something and you don't know who you're going to run into. Um, you may run into a contact that could put you on to a, a greater opportunity. I have gotten so much business by accident just because I'm consistent with my image across the board. Yeah. And, and let me tell you uh, something that's new for me. And uh, I guess I, it's okay, but like sometimes like, I kind of miss my old life just a little bit at times. Mm -hmm. But, but like, I can't go out anymore. Like I used to, in other words, like I can't just throw on the t-shirt basketball shorts and some Jordan slippers mm -hmm. and be out. Because usually when I do that, somebody say, Hey, wait a minute. Uh -huh. Don't you got a YouTube channel uh, that that's happening to me so much. Mm -hmm. And I would say more so now that I can't go out the house like that no more. Right. And, and because, because you are become synonymous with your brand. You are the face of the you are the face of the advice show, so how people see you out and about will make a direct impact upon your business. So now it will be it will it, so, but if that's how you like to dress, there's still a way to do it, um, to where you can put on what you like more relaxed. And you like your like you say your 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 shorts, your your Jordans, your your T-shirt. There's a way to have that kind of look, that kind of feel, because, I mean, let's be realistic. Most guys, especially today, don't want to be dressed like this. What I showed guys how to do is how to dress well for business and your personal life, uh, especially that casual wear to where you actually look like you're ready to take care of business, whether it's personal or professional. Right. So what I've been doing as of late, just making sure I always, you know, have a pair of jeans on, maybe a polo mm -hmm. shirt or something to that effect. Um, mm -hmm. but, but cause like I said, I just can't go out like that unless I just don't get out of my car, then, <laughs> right. then, then that's, then that's fine. But other than that, like I said, it's just, you know, like I said, it, it's different. People don't realize that it's like, as you, when you go certain places, I remember, I remember with the crazy part of when I was in Ethiopia, 
mm-hmm. and somebody recognized me. And I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, so it, it gets, <laughs> it can get a little overwhelming at times. Yeah. And, and you're down there in Houston. Yeah. So, it, you know, the heat and the humidity. So if I was styling, now I don't, I haven't done an evaluation on you, but I, one of the things I would say is look at linen. Linen works exceptionally well, especially on brothers. You know, linen shirts, linen pants. Um, you can wear, you know, different kind of, you know, driving moccasins instead of like tennis shoes all the time. Uh, you know, monk strap shoes that have the buckle on top of them. We can dress so well in linen and it works exceptionally well this time of year. It's dressy, but it's casual. You still look like you're ready for business and you're still comfortable. All right. Also, you know, and another thing that's speaking about everything in total package with men, mm-hmm. I know a lot of these young guys don't mm-hmm. understand the power of a firm handshake. Mm-hmm. Some of these guys, I shake their hand and they shake in my hand like a woman would shake my hand. I'm like, what do these guys are raised? Well, you kind of explain to them what that means w- with men. Cause like you say, a lot of these guys didn't have a dad around. Okay. So I have a series that I'm doing on my channel right now. Mm-hmm. Things your father should have taught you. And it's the power of the, these things are called soft skills. Um, everything that we do, uh, like I said, is, is communication. So when a man, sees another man, one of the things I tell young guys is you want to always make sure you have a your posture. You need to have your you stand up straight. You need to look a man in the eye. You need to have your shoulders, you know, level. And when you go in, you shake. You go in with a firm handshake, press, pump three times and release. You know, I was taught that by the you know my father and my uncle, but a lot of guys didn't see that. So in my videos and things like that, I talk about these kind of things. Um, and what I find is this is new information to a lot of guys. This was normal when we grew up learning how to tie a tie. I knew how to tie a tie at six years old. I tied a bow tie. I know, I know guys who are in their thirties who d- can't tie a tie and, and don't have to wear a suit and, never, and don't own a suit and they make six figures. So there's a disconnect between the generations and it's for, and this is why I decided to do what I do is to come down and teach these, these kind of nuances uh, and let guys know how important it is because at the end of the day, the younger guys are going to be the they're going to be the ones that are leading us forward. And if, if, if we don't if they don't get taught, they won't know it. And this stuff gets lost. But one thing I will say, Phil, that I'm really encouraged that if you look at the generations, Generation X, Millennials. The Generation Z, the generation that's kind of coming out of high school and the college now, they are all, all, they are as a group reaching back to our to our grandparents and our great grandparents uh, for inspiration, on their thoughts about image, on their thoughts about relationship, um, because they've actually got a chance to see the, the previous generations, the the good, the bad, the ugly, and they're making decisions uh, to to actually um, to actually reclaim masculine image and style. That's what I've noticed the most. And that's not even, that's across the board. So that, that's a good thing. They're wanting to learn. Yes, sir. And also, you know, when you have this, you know, great attack on masculinity, you mm-hmm. know, in this society also, you know, has a uh, effect, you know, because if, if you're not focusing on masculinity, then how can, you know, young men or even grown other men but know anything about styling themselves, dressing themselves for the boardroom. Cause like I said, you never know when you're going to make a business deal. You don't know. And I, I was remembering the movie, um, or Will Smith, that pursuit of happiness, even though he was on the streets, he was still going to do, you know, his job interviews with a business suit on. Mm-hmm. And he only had one, mm-hmm. but he wore it. And he wore and, it. And especially for black men, our, you know, black masculinity has always been under assault to start off you know, the D.W. Griffith, Birth of a Nation. The, you know, Public Enemy talked about fear of the black planet. When a black man reclaims his image, he's a force to be reckoned with. And and that is what I'm, try, I'm trying to get brothers to understand. You have in, in you this power, it's your superpower, and you're not really using it. Use it to your advantage. 
and especially in a society that's that's putting so many you know different things in front of us, uh, the LGBT community, you know, they can do what they want to do, uh, but they're pushing these messages. I want men to push back and say, no, it is good to be a man. You know, I don't call it toxic masculinity. I call it infectious masculinity because when a man is the best version of himself, the world is a better place. He draws a circle around the things that he loves and protects those things. The first thing, though, he has to protect and value is himself, though. And actually, people treat you the way you treat yourself. And at a glance, people look at us and see how we carry ourselves and assume at how we treat ourselves and act accordingly. You are so right about that because some people can look at you and know, okay, I'm not going to say certain things to him, mm -hmm. but then they look at another one and say all kinds of crazy things. Uh, That's to true. Him. Cause you know, I've had people say, well, man, this, this person came up to me saying all kinds of craziness, but I said, I never have those issues. Mm -hmm. I, said, I guess it made my overall look. Cause you know, I, my wife say, you know, a lot of times you look like you mean and you ready to take somebody's <laughs> head off. I said, no, that's just my look. Right. You know, and, and even people tell me during these interviews, I'm quiet. I'm listening to what people are saying. Some of you think, man, you look mean. I'm like, no, I'm just listening to what somebody's saying, but you just interpreting that, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I, I like not being too approached. Right. Well, and, and you know, again, we grew up on a different generation where the strong silent type has become foreign. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I'm trying to do is actually make it, make it not only acceptable, make it cool. See, in 1991 is where I think the biggest change in the black community happened. When Dr. Dre dropped The Chronic, we went from conscious rap to all of a sudden this gangster rap, the, the, the quote unquote, the, uh, the romanization of, of, of street culture, thug culture. Um, before that, we used to actually, we, we actually look forward to growing up. We guys wanted to actually, you know, get on up and be able to do man things. Um, and so, and, and in hip hop culture, and there's nothing wrong with hip hop, <clears throat> but it's almost like an arrested development. Guys don't want to graduate past wearing some of the street wear kind of stuff because they don't feel, they don't really see anybody ahead of them doing that anybody ahead of them that they view as cool or respectable or that they can relate to. So guys get a lot, get kind of stuck right here. And we're trying to get guys to realize is there's a way to dress in your 20s that can get you the best outcomes in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, and your 60s. And neither one is better than the other. It's just an evolution of a man. That's why one of my favorite uh, Instagram uh, channels, I think the brother's right there down in Houston. His name is um, Irvin Randall. This brother's in his 60s, and his tag name is, I think, Mr. Steal Your Grandma. Oh yeah, I know that Gucci guy you're talking about. But that he had that gray fox look, man. But see, we I saw we saw a lot of that. We saw more of that or more guys like that. It was growing up. Think about was it Clyde Frazier of the New York Knicks? And you look at some of the uh, NBA players in the seventies, man. They were the the style moguls. So if we can let guys realize that hey, <clears throat> there's a place for it all. There's a place for your Jordans. There's a place for your Timberland. There's a place for your uh, lace-ups. There's a place for your monk strap. There's a place for your ball cap. There's a place for your fedora. There's a place for your jersey. There's a place for your for your uh, cashmere sweater. There's a place for your jean jacket. There's a place for your suit. It all needs to be in your wardrobe. And but depending on where you're going and what you're doing and trying to communicate, that's where you, that's what you need to put on for that occasion. Right. And, and, you know, along the lines of everything you're saying, you know, that translate also to a lot of men not having confidence and you really have a whole genre on YouTube now where a bunch of men is just so not confident mm -hmm. to even approach a woman and, and letting <laughs> women just tell them any old thing and arguing with women. And I'm like, dude, why would you even argue with women like that? You know, y'all complaining on women all the time. Like, you know, you can just kind of tell, man. It's like, what's going on with these guys, man? It's like, they just like have no confidence. Well, on, along the lines of making this easy to understand, I break image down as A, B, C, D. Image mm -hmm. as simple as A, B, C, D. Appearance, behavior, communication, digital footprint. Digital footprint means your look online. 
that's simple. The guys can understand that their image is broken down into that, and they need to manage that. But I say a man needs to be CIA, confident, intelligent, and assertive. And women, conversely, need to be FBI, feminine, beautiful, inspirational. I've started out styling women and men, uh, but I focus more on guys. And one of the big things I work, focus on when I deal with men is that confidence piece. The confident the, uh, the confidence uh, that you're talking about, Phil, is, is just been so diminished because guys, the way they look at themselves. And what I've noticed is like a lot of people on the style side, they don't live stream. I live stream so I can actually teach. But I am encouraged to see that I have had to stay at it, stay at it, stay at it, stay at it. But I get emails every day of guys saying, you know what, when I first ran across your channel, I saw you in this suit and I really didn't relate to you, but then I listened to this one stream and it resonated with me. Now I'm out here doing what you say, you know, working this 60 plus hours, you know, working 60 hours a minimum to get my money together. I'm looking at myself in a different way. You know, I'm doing this, I'm stepping out of the box, I'm trying new things. I get emails uh, weekly, almost daily now, of guys saying about these is starting to really impact and change their life. And that's the benefit of actually guys being CIA, confident, intelligent, and assertive. That assertive part, though, you know, the confidence is cool. We need that. The intelligent piece of it, whether it's book, whether it's book knowledge or common sense, you know, we got a lot of brothers who have that intelligence, but it's the assertive piece. We got to do something. Knowing something and not applying it matters nothing. What I find is competitors don't complain. If you're actually out there doing something, you're actually out actually out there competing, you got something to work on if you're actually out there doing. See, that's what I really try to get guys to get out and do because when you're doing, you really don't have as much time to complain because you're refining and improving. Right. So so most people look at you and say, okay, Mr. Kevin Samuel here look like a successful man. He's talking about coaching people, uh, mm -hmm. dealing with corporations, etc. I ask you a question. How many hours do you sleep a night? Uh Four or five. Four or five. Why mm -hmm. is that? Uh, I got work to do. Okay. I, 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 I mean, one of the big things I preach on my channel, Phil, I tell you, I say, if a, a man, if you're under 40, single and no kids and not working 60 hours at least a week, I don't want to hear a damn thing about your money problems. Get out and go to work. Get off YouTube and go to work. Who told you 40 hours was enough? Get out and go to work. On cue is 7 Eleven hiring for $13.50 an hour. I've gone around the city and show people applications and show people little signs like go out there and take that money, work and save a third of it, you know, invest, save a third of it, uh, and take a third of it in self improvement and, and improve yourself, and then whatever you want with the rest of it because you should not have more month than money. Now, I can't tell people that if I'm not doing it myself. When you decide to work for yourself, free yourself up from the system, I spent 20 years working in business to business sales in corporate America. I was a top ranked salesperson. But as soon as you leave that job, their money leaves. You want to work for yourself? I need to work harder for myself than I work for them. I can, no one's going to give me anything. I got to get out here and compete. No one's going to just knock on my door and say, hey, Kevin, I want you as my image coach or my life coach. I got to go out and compete. I got to get out and work. And actually it comes and and honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm fortunate enough at this point in life to be living on my purpose. I have been this most of my life. I just wasn't ready to do this. You know, about seven, almost 10 years ago, a, a a circumstances allowed me to actually get into this industry and it's something that has always resonated with me. So honestly, I can't wait to get up. When I'm sleeping, I'm still thinking about, I, I, I will get up sometimes and have an idea and get on my, you know, write down a note. That's the kind of life I think any guy would want to live. Yeah, you see, I can, see the thing is, I can relate to that and I have about the same sleep schedule is because I enjoy what I do and I'm doing it for me. Like, see, mm -hmm. when you work for a company, you couldn't fathom that because you yep. work for somebody else. They really don't appreciate you. You're an employee number. They replace you like it's oh, no yes. more, right? Yes. But yeah, when you're yeah. working for yourself, like you said, sometimes if I'm just sitting around, I have different ideas like, oh man, I get up, 
you know, I need to go to the computer, write something down and, and then mm -hmm. I'm done with it. Or, and I'm the type of person, if I, I can't just sit around and in my mind, waste time. Right. I can't do it because I could be occupied in that time with something productive. Well, and, and the reality is, you know, I have colleagues who like, why are you, why did you leave working with actors and politicians and all these people who understood what an image consultant does, has the budget, why'd you leave all that to go work in middle America where you got to teach people? I was, and I told him, I was like, because I can make a bigger impact over here. Over here, you, 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 you are a cog in a machine. Yeah, you may be working for this actor or this politician or this, you know, this record label or whatever, but over here you can actually change people's lives and it changes people's lives. So I, I almost feel like duty. I don't, I can't waste time cause it's too important. We, we have a small window here, you know, we're on YouTube and I think we have another 36 to 48 months before this platform changes forever because you'll see like people like Will Smith and Hollywood and all that stuff. I used to work in the advertising industry. There's still, hundreds of millions of dollars of advertising still going on to TV. But when that TV money starts going on to YouTube, we're going to be drowned out because Hollywood will come in with their, with their machines, with the Hollywood machine, the, the teams of editors and producers, and it's going to become more and more difficult to compete on this space. Um, you've been on, on this platform, what, 10 plus years? No, no, I've been uh, at least on this channel. Let me see. I think I was 34 years of each. I think six years on this particular channel. Okay. Um, but, but what I will say about that, I want to retort that the mainstream media news channels was always on YouTube along with the rest of us. And actually independent media was literally destroying them. And so oh, yeah. YouTube gave them a leg up by coming up with this fake news thing and saying, mm -hmm. well, we want to give legitimate news sources, um, you know, uh, front, you know, search or whatever. So YouTube had to help them to get where they at because they couldn't even compete. Yeah. The CNNs and the MSNBCs mm -hmm. and the Foxes of the world. Yeah. They were always lagging behind. Yeah. And you know, when that, when the apocalypse came along, that was the old, that was the legacy media attacking the new media, you know, planting that story. Well, I don't want to get too deep into that, but having worked in that business, you know, like you said, they couldn't compete with the independents, but now you see, um, now you see Hollywood stars coming on to, uh, YouTube. Uh, what was that YouTube prime or where they had Cobra Kai and all these different series. You yeah. saw, uh, Issa Rae go from here to insecure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really what I want to really what I'm passionate about working. I want to see black men actually make our own media, our own image to where it's not always being crafted for us by, you know, Tyler Perry studios or the dominant society where, you know, we need our own version of insecure. We need our own versions of these kind of things, uh, made by black men for black men where we control our own image, uh, funded by us to where we don't have to worry about, you know, getting money from other people to actually influence our overall message. Correct. So Kevin, I would like to ask you a question. Could you tell people how they can get some of your consulting services? Because I know there's a lot of brothers mm -hmm. that behind the scenes probably message you and say, you know, brother, how could you help me change mm -hmm. my whole image of, I got a company and, and I want to get some contracts, but maybe I don't have the right look. Okay. Uh, you can, the easiest thing to do is contact me on my website. It's www.bykevinsamuels.com. And Regardless as to what it is, what it is you may need, everything starts with the Skype consultation. And that and that Skype consultation is uh, once you purchase and check out, uh, I actually sit down with you for about an hour, an hour plus, go over some basic stuff. I'll tell you what I uh, tell you what your style personality is, and help you understand some of the basic things you need to build a classic masculine wardrobe, whether you have the money now or whether you're just planning in the future. And what that does for you, Phil, is it, it helps you know what not to do. One of the things that most people don't realize is most people don't wear 70 to 80% of their clothes. If I said, hey, Phil, we're gonna go out to meet, um, I, don't, I don't know, 
we're going to we're going to meet the mayor. You know instinctively what you would go to in your closet to kind of pick to sure. go meet the mayor. Mm -hmm. My thing is everything you reach past is probably a waste of money, and not you in particular, but most people. Uh, a lot of times we'll buy stuff because it just strikes us or it's on sale. And then you're looking, you just never really wear it. But you know when you have to make an uh, 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 impact, you know what you grab, go for in your closet. What I try to, what I help guys to understand is a lot of that stuff doesn't fit your style personality. It's not the way you communicate. You actually gravitate towards the stuff that actually helps you communicate what you're trying to have as an outcome. So now, you, now you'll be able to know, well, instead of buying this brand or that kind of shirt or this kind, this is the kind of stuff that kind of fits me. So you eliminate a lot of wasted time. Then you can actually focus on investing more into the fit, into the quality of it. If you ain't trying to buy 10, 11, 12 or something you ain't gonna never wear. And then learning that, you know what? Yeah, you may end up buying it at Neiman Marcus or Saks or Saks uh, Fifth Avenue or Nordstrom, but you don't pay retail. You go to Nordstrom Rack instead. You go to Neiman Marcus Last Call instead. You go to Saks Off Fifth instead. So instead of paying six, seven hundred dollars for a pair of shoes, you got them on sale for one hundred and fifty dollars. So you take that extra five hundred and fifty dollars that you got, and you may end up going to buy you a nice sport coat or something on sale. And then when you get your wardrobe, which is probably about a hundred pieces or so for the average guy, you know, you and I live different kind of lives, so we'll have maybe a broader suit selection, sports coat, everything else. Once it's there, you just maintain that. Quality, you just maintain quality. So there is an end point to all this stuff. So you buy quality, it lasts, you take care of it, it takes care of you. Right, so you know, ladies and gentlemen, you wanna definitely make sure to go to the website. You know, definitely, even if you have a son that's growing up and, and maybe the dad isn't around, you know, still contact Kevin because the young men need guidance. I mean, it, you do need the, the brothers to come in to help if you don't have that around. I mean, we definitely want to encourage that. So brother Kevin, we definitely thank you for joining us on the show today. We greatly appreciate all the knowledge that you have given. You have helped a lot of young men just in this conversation, believe it or not. Well, that's what we need to do. I appreciate you having me on.